Hello, it's Sam from Art for Introvert, and today I want to discuss the best movie adaptation of Vladimir Nabokov's Lolita. This controversial novel remains a debatable literary work even today. We'll discuss a novel and its adaptation that organically continues the never-ending conversation about artistic and ethical values of this text that has been on since the novel was first published. Vladimir Nabokov was writing Lolita for eight long and excruciating years. A couple of times he even wanted to tear the novel to pieces. But his wife Vera saved the text that came to be the central in the writer's career. The release of the novel provided him with financial means sufficient to quit teaching in the USA, come back to Europe and live for the rest of his life in the Swiss Alps. People overreact to Lolita and have polarized opinions of it. Either pure hatred or overwhelming love. The novel tells us the story of Humbert Humbert, a man in his 40s who has an unhealthy craving for 10-12 year old girls whom he calls Nymphette. One day, he stays in a small town where he rents a room in a house of a 35 year old widow Charlotte Hayes. She happens to be raising a 12 year old girl Lolita. Humbert immediately brands her Nymphette and marries the widow just to be near Lolita. After Charlotte Hayes tragically dies, Humbert and Lolita embark on a journey across America. Later, Lolita escapes from Humbert with the help of Quilty, a playwright of very controversial movies. Next time Humbert meets Lolita occurs a few years later, she is married and is expecting a baby. Humbert finds out who helped her escape and kills Quilty, and to make a long story short, he ends up in jail where he soon dies. A few words about the complexity of the novel. Lolita's protagonist is Humbert Humbert, who is also a narrator of the story. Nabokov uses the technique of an unreliable narrator when we do not see an objective picture and we know what is happening only from the words of the character. And this makes the novel extremely difficult to adapt. The movie doesn't show us the real situation and the real Lolita. We are literally locked in the protagonist's mind and see everything from his perspective. He rationalizes what he does by always saying that Lolita was the one to seduce him. At the same time, she doesn't interest him, they remain strangers to each other. He is only interested in his own image of Lolita that lives in his imagination. But Nabokov's literary prowess and the hidden incoherences make us believe Humbert's story. Nabokov's main character is always juxtaposed to everyone else, to the surroundings. In Lolita, Humbert is opposed to America, the America of Hollywood styles, simple ideas, and clear meanings. It is personified in Claire Quilty, the character to whom Lolita runs away from Humbert. Quilty, in fact, never liked Lolita and offered her a part in a porn movie. This clearly shows that he belongs to the ordinary, vulgar, sensual world in contrast to Humbert, for whom sex is not just sex, but some aesthetic experience. So Lolita was likely to turn to Quilty rather than to the main character because the only connecting link between her and Humbert was his passion for her. She is the product of this vulgar world, she likes Hollywood, comics, and other attributes of popular culture. Humbert, on the other hand, sees her not as Dolores Hayes, but as his own image of an infant. Nabokov's novel is about how a person is locked in the prison of their own temptation from which there is no escape. Concerning movie adaptations, the first one was made by Stanley Kubrick seven years after the book was published. The script was written by Nabokov himself, and this is a 400-page text of superb literature which better fits the category of an edited novel rather than a script of a movie. Kubrick, though, thanked Vladimir Nabokov, rewrote the text and edited it down twofold. However, Nabokov published the screenplay as a book and the text is brimming with stylistic decorations, more appropriate for the written word. But to the writer's credit, he divided the screenplay into three acts, improved the dialogues, and made them less impenetrable and more interesting. Nabokov even received an Oscar nomination for Best Adaptive Screenplay. Nevertheless, the elegance of the original writer's script never made it into the film. It is important to say that at that time, the Hayes Code was active in American cinema. 
It was the ethical code of Hollywood which obviously limited director's freedom. Violence, nudity, obscene language were banned on the screen. In many ways, this code accounted for the absence of sexual background of the story in Kubrick's version. Even the main focus of the film has shifted. In the movie, Humbert Humbert's conflict with cruelty comes to the fore, which happens only once or twice in the novel. The film opens and ends with Quilty's name, which differs from the novel. It begins and ends with the name of Lolita. The movie centers around the conflict between two men instead of the main character's pernicious passion. Stanley Kubrick turns the subjective, sensual and largely tragic narrative of this text into a tragicomic satire on the everyday life of America, which is expressed in the confrontation of the main character and Quilty. Lolita waited 35 years for the next movie adaptation. The movie adaptation by Adrian Lin is sensual, erotic, and shows much more than Kubrick. Kubrick surrounded his characters with works of art, poetry, and literature, and added references to Spartacus, Frankenstein, and Charlie Chaplin. Lin's movie adaptation is significantly inferior to Kubrick's playing with cultural signs. The film is almost devoid of satire and humor. At the same time, Lin immerses us more in Humbert's subjective view of the world. The camera work is extremely flattering. The camera glides over Lolita's body, gently focusing on its various parts thereby adding a fair share of eroticism to this film. Here, we can recall Humbert Humbert and his definition of a nymphette as a femme fatale, smart and sly. In the image of the nymphette, there is a demonic spark. Two directors showed this image from two different sides. In Kubrick's adaptation, we see a ruthless beauty who commands Humbert, but there is very little aggressive sexuality in her. The 1997 movie adaptation shows us a demonic femme fatale more powerful and artful than Kubrick's Lolita. The director of the film doesn't just hint at their connection, but has the courage to show us Lolita and Humbert's intimacy. As a result, we see two very different movie adaptations that show us completely different sides of Nabokov's great work. As we mentioned at the beginning, this novel is difficult to film. All the layers of meaning and wordplay cannot be directly conveyed on the big screen. Both directors don't have the strength to grasp all the meanings of the novel. Kubrick puts more emphasis on the play of cultural meanings and references that Nabokov is so famous for, while Lenz's film adaptation is more atmospheric and more subtly conveys Humbert's inner experiences. At the same time, both adaptations fall under the spell of Nabokov's charm, making the main character look much better than he really is. Kubrick's style has more satire, better work with the play of meanings, and more delicate work with sexual implications. The 1997 movie adaptation also shows us the world through Humbert's eyes, and this film was made with a much greater emphasis on the erotic side of the novel. The director eliminates any objective view of events and immerses us in the world of the protagonist's desires. Which movie adaptation do you like the most?